Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of Deck Collection 101. Today we have two very special guests, our very own Candice, our U.S. Office Coordinator, and Sean Ferris, the COO of Argonne Agency. How you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you guys? Good. 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 So tell us a little bit about yourself and your role at Argonne. Well, I have had the fortunate opportunity to be in our collection industry since 1991. I started as a collector. I really wasn't sure what my job was going to be. I just took a job and my parents were grateful for that. But my uh, mother had to explain to me what I was going to be doing on a daily basis, which then I became terrified. <laughs> but 20 plus years later, uh, here I am, I've made it through. I've had the fortunate ability to own my own agency and start from scratch and grow it and now the fortunate opportunity to help a company transform from what it was to what it is today and, and hopefully what it will become. Yeah, that's great. 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 Um, in what capacity does Argon use team bonding to improve employee engagement and communication? So the answer is actually in the question, but I'll, I guess I'll reverse the words and I apologize. <laughs> so proper. We used engagement and communication to create team bonding. We were, our, our footprint, if we're, we have five offices, they're smaller offices, but they go from the East Coast all the way through Hawaii. Mm. And our office is functioned almost as little independent small companies inside of a larger company instead of being part of a larger company moving towards that same direction. So we were very fractured or decentralized. And we had to start by learning to engage and communicate with each other before we could actually get to bonding. And but those two, those two things allowed us to become a bonded or unified group. So it's a little, it's kind of a twist of what you asked. Sure. What are some examples of those activities? Uh, so we had to, at first, purposely, very deliberately, had to execute communication from the, at the top level of the company and show the rest of the company how we were going to start engaging. And then that had to almost waterfall or cascade down through the organization to it. It became, at that point, communication with operational management and department management and then flowing that back upwards and then eventually it fell down to communicating with employees and since we are fractured we have embraced today's modern I think today's more modern form of communication we embrace Skype mm. and that is our 95% of the way we communicate so we're not just making a phone call we're visibly engaged. Mm -hmm. And so it became kind of at that point, once we got to the employees, it became almost town hall style where they could see us, we could see them, we could communicate, we could listen to the things that they liked and saw and strengths in the company, but areas that we felt they felt were opportunities for us to improve, not just for them, but overall. Um, it, it, that was different for me because I, prior to that, I was, let's, we need to meet in person or we can talk on the phone and now you know Skype and Facebook actually it becomes something I'm highly comfortable with mm -hmm. and uh, but my daughters don't like that at all either. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we do here too we have a lot of communication you know with our Brazil office and having you know video calls on Monday mornings and even if it's just on an individual scale and it, it helps a lot more rather than you know just obviously messaging each other back and forth. I think this keeps everybody, you, you're in, uh, we're engaged. Mm -hmm. You can't, on a conference call, we all, we all see the YouTube where you can mute it and just sit and talk about anything else or accidentally not mute it and spend a long inappropriate thing. <laughs> this actually, this form of communication helps us stay visibly engaged and I think have a better understanding because you can't hide behind the phone or you can't hide behind an email or an instant message. And there's no misinterpretation of what you're saying. There's no, someone walks out with a different perception. You, you, you can 
we solve that immediately. Right. Yeah, yeah you could definitely see a lot in face expressions, so <laughs> it's definitely helpful. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so would you say you have a good response from the employees? What is the response like? Yes, because they, it was the things that we asked or the things that we talked about never existed for them. Uh, even with management, um, at times decisions were made by the executive team uh, and management would question it or have questions about it, but those decisions were made. Technology changed or we went a different direction and they didn't understand why and what their role was or what the impact would look like. And, and now we were able to bridge all of that, talk about it, communicate um, both two ways. Um, you know, I think our culture has become a very open line of communication, a transparent line of communication, you know, both ways up and down. And that never existed. Before they would walk in, do their job, and leave, and not really under they understood how it benefited them financially, but what, not what their impact was to the overall success for clients in the company. Yeah. Right. And now, what kind of differences have you seen in the culture of your agency? Trust. Yeah. I think it started. I could tell you to do something today and someone else could tell you to do something in our past culture, and they would be opposite and put you in conflict of what am I supposed to do because now I've been given two different directions mm -hmm. regarding the same thing. That, it's eliminating that, and so we have trust from the top down and actually then from the, the bottom up. And that really, even though it wasn't spoken, that didn't exist. And I think my second would be mindfulness, where we now, I don't just make a decision, because I know that that decision will have impacts that I need to actually step back and take five to 10 to maybe 15 minutes to think about what that impact might look like and what other departments it might impact, including clients, employees, accounting, IT, finance, client purposes, we just don't, we didn't do things because it made my job easier. We now do things that go, does this actually really benefit us overall? Mm -hmm. And if not, how can we create something that does? Yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah. And I know you kind of touched base about this, but um, so what do you think the main reason is that team bonding is so important and worthwhile and, as, I'm sorry, and is a worthwhile investment? It gave us a culture that we didn't have, or and it then helped us identify what that culture is. It then also has now created a strength in the company that we have to believe foundationally but now allows us to advance forward. Um, and I think you have to have a very highly engaged workforce at all levels, top down, yeah. and almost. It, become a high performing team because you're I think we're all trying to we're trying to achieve double digit growth on a daily or annual basis and we've now accomplished that for two years as we're going through the process. So that gives us excitement for what it will happen when it just truly becomes uh, second nature or first nature actually. Yeah. Okay. That's really Great, cool. yeah. Well Sean, hey, thank you very much for coming on to the show. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thank you. As usual, everybody, like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.